Hello everyone, this is uh, Chris with the uh, Ancient Scholar. I wanted to just cover something real quickly, um, just to clear up any confusion, or if, if there is any confusion, I just want to go ahead and um, address that now. And really what I'm talking about is I'm talking about the energy levels um, of the orbitals within um, a different atoms. I think this can get very confusing, uh, certainly uh, if you guys have watched all the quantum numbers videos, I, which I hope you, you have at this point, uh, I had uh, talked about this concept of, of shielding or screening, and, and that in multi-electron atoms we have to take that into consideration, and we actually have to calculate, or we have to, to understand that um, certain electrons are not going to feel, if you will, uh, the full force of the Coulombic interaction uh, between the, the nucleus and the electron. Um, I could have a plus three charge in the nucleus and that electron may not feel, for lack of better words, all of that charge because yes there is an attraction, a Coulombic uh, attraction uh, between the electron and the electron wants to go or be near the nucleus, but we must understand that the electron is not by itself anymore and there are other electrons around and that electron actually feels a repulsion um, and some of that repulsion is going to prevent that electron from experiencing the, the full, cool, full force, uh, full charge, if you will, it's, it's, it's shielded or screened. Even though it's not literally being shielded, uh, we can look at that repulsion um, as kind of shielding it from feeling the full, um, the full uh, Coulombic interaction with the nucleus, if you will. But I want to be very specific about one point. I want to be very specific that that is the case with multi-electron atoms. In an atom, the single electron, like a hydrogen atom, so hydrogen hydrogen-like, we'll say, I want to be very clear that energy, the energy of the different orbitals, only is only dictated by one quantum number, and that is the n number, okay? So I'm just going to draw, and these are certainly not going to be to scale, but I just want to draw some energy level diagrams. Uh, this will be uh, low energy, this will be high energy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start um, with n equals one. Okay. So what do we have n equals one? Well, we have all we have is an s orbital. So we have a a one s orbital here, and I can fit two electrons in there, and they can take spin one half, plus one half, negative one half. Okay. So so we know that the quantum number here would be. Um, L equals zero. M sub L is going to equal zero as well, right? We just have an s orbital, you know, nothing new there. And then M sub s positive negative one half. I'm just going to do this and put one s. We know that that's all we have if n equals one. So now what happens is that shell's full, and we move uh, on up to n equals two. And what do I have? Well, I have a 2s orbital. Two electrons there. And then I have my 2p orbital. Okay. And I actually have the 2px, y, and z. Two electrons in each gives me six electrons, right? And my 2s fills up. My 2p fills up so on and so forth. But what I want to be very, very clear about, let me go ahead and erase this, what I want to be very clear about in, in this atom is that the 2s and the 2p have exactly the same energy. Exactly the same energy. The energy is dictated only by n. Now, in a multi-electron multi-electron atom, this is different because I now have 
repulsion, I have screening, I have shielding occurring. So in this case, what we'll do is we'll say n equals 1, okay, have my orbital there, I can start filling with electrons. Now, in the hydrogen-like atom, we're not actually going to have, even though I, I drew the, the up and down, in a hydrogen-like atom, we only have one electron. And the, one, the electron can go here, 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 not multiple electrons, though. Let me be clear. One electron here, and that electron can move. If we give it energy, it can move into higher levels of energy, but it's just one. Now we're talking about multiple electrons. So n equals 1, n equals 2. Okay. So we have our 1s. We have our 2s here. Okay. And now this is where, with multiple electrons, okay, this is where the energy kind of gets a little different. Even though the 2p is in the same shell, the n, the principal quantum number is the same, the 2p orbitals are going to have higher energy because, and let me just go ahead and draw them here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and we'll throw in a couple of electrons here, all right, because of the repulsion. These electrons are experiencing repulsion here. So what we can say is that the 2p electrons are being shielded from the, and if you could think of the nucleus as being down here, these are kind of shielded. They're not feeling the full force of attraction. So they're actually going to be at a higher energy level even though the n number, n equals 2, is still the same. But we need to be clear that that does not happen in a one electron, a hydrogen-like um, atom. It only happens in a multi-electron atom, which is, well, pretty much most of the atoms that we run into, you know, with the exception of hydrogen. And why is that? Why are the, you know, the two P's and that? Why do the P orbitals generally have higher energy levels? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to address on a different video because it's very interesting and it has to do with um, how we plot the probability uh, density. Because again, these orbitals really don't exist in um, any tangible sort of way. They're just areas of high probability density. That's it. Um, but when we plot a, an S versus a P, something really interesting happens, and it's a concept known as penetration. And we'll talk about that on other videos. Okay, guys, hopefully that helps out a little bit.